Hi guys, welcome back to the New Jersey Disney family. Um, we're here again today. It's actually the same day, but we're trying to utilize our time right now and post as much as we can to give you guys an inside scoop of what you need to know on your next Disney vacation. Especially with the kids taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, our kids are taking, well, Addison's not, but the, big, the baby's taking a nap. Um, all right, so one topic we wanted to go over that I get asked a lot from a lot of my mom friends when they go to Disney is, what do I need to bring with my kids? So, obviously a backpack, you need some type of backpack. Um, I let Joe usually hold a backpack because I'm always holding a kid. Yeah, we so, have a couple of Disney backpacks that we got. Uh, we actually got this nice Mickey Mouse. I should have brought it downstairs. Yeah, they always have like an incentive at the Disney yeah. store. If you, you, you know, you have a $50 over, $25 over purchase, you can get this backpack for $10. I mean, if you want something Disney related, it's definitely a good thing to take advantage of. Um, but it helps packing just everything, you know, the stuff you need for that day and store it right on your back. Uh, yeah, you, right. You need stuff when you go with but, kids but, to look Disney. Good, yeah, snacks and juices and water aside from like the snacks and the bottles if they're on formula or whatever it may be or if you're nursing a nursing cover um one thing that i think is so helpful and i found this out from a friend of mine was the baby carrier to wear on because when you're online sometimes and you don't have a fast pass like my son will not stay next to me so i literally put him in there hold him in there with the baby carrier so he's contained and i have control with him um, so a baby carrier, another thing that we found, which was great, was the disposable place mats. They sell them on Amazon, I think Target may have mm -hmm. them in the store. They literally um, detach and they stick on to the surface. So if you're going to a sit down or you're going to a quick service and you put the baby in a high chair, you just put it right on the surface and they're well, able especially to- Especially nowadays with the, what's going on with the coronavirus, I'm sure it's not gonna get any easier once Disney opens. You, you know, food falls on the table, Listen, Disney does a good job of cleaning, they but do. they can't they get to everything. It's just too right, much. It's right. impossible. And yeah, you better to be safe than sorry. And bring lots of wipes, antibacterial and all that yeah, stuff. Wipes, wipes are big Jarell, right down the rides. And extra pacifiers um, if they're on a pacifier. Pacifier um, wipes, yeah. I always bring like Motrin, God forbid. Um, we do bring like an iPad, but only for the plane. We don't, they don't even look for that in the parks. Obviously they're busy. If you want to bring your own stroller, you obviously can, an umbrella stroller. The only thing I don't like about the umbrella strollers, not knocking anybody who brings them, they don't recline. So like when your kid is napping, they're like this, like kinked in the stroller and they can't recline. So I got a cheap stroller for the two of them because Addison sometimes doesn't want to walk. Um, on Amazon, I think it was like 160 and they can both sit in it. So it was worth it. Um, it was a light stroller and I was able to utilize that on Amazon. There was a company called Kingdom Strollers. That was great. They would, you know, you would rent like a city mini. They would drop it off at your resort. I think for like seven days, maybe a hundred dollars. Um, but now they made it a lot more difficult. Yeah. Like you have to be at the hotel when they drop it off and it has to be at a certain, I said, listen, checking no, times, flight times, checking times, there's everything's no guarantee different. when you travel so. that you're going to make it there. So I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I mean, great service. Kingdom strollers. If you want to check them out, the strollers were clean. Um, they were pristine because I'm very picky with that, but you may just be better off buying something cheap yeah, on buy, Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Buying something cheap and it's about the same as what it costs to rent it. And you can use it for other stuff too. Yes. Now, speaking of services, uh, one thing I, I've never even used it before, so let alone used it for, for this thing, the mini lift through the lift app. I know, it uh, makes me want a Suburban now. No, we're not getting one. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, it, it Joe really sell, was... Joe sells Ford, by the way. He sells Ford cars. He manages a Ford store, so he's like against me getting any other kind of car. But anyway. Um, really, it was awesome. It was really inspired. We, we were saying it's Port Orleans, from Port Orleans to... Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood was 27 bucks uh, and what's nice about this what a lot of people don't know is the especially well not now but once the Reeb opens uh, and what it's been is the buses start running an hour before the park opens at seven o'clock so apartments of eight to is seven. Is this just nine, for Hollywood eight. though? Well whatever the park is it opens an hour before whatever the park opens but they open at oh, nine this and is start the running at eight. Time you're saying. Yeah. Okay not just because Hollywood has all these new rides. Yeah so if you want to get to Hollywood on time you 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 got to take a mini lift. We got there. We left at 6.30. But, but why do we need to get to Hollywood? Oh, well, that's because for the, the Rise Resistance and the Mickey's Runaway Railway. Um, so we decided to take the lift because we knew waiting on the bus with everybody else, we would never got there in time. So we took the lift. They got there on time. The guy was super nice. 
Uh, the one thing they said in the um, the reviews was they talk a lot, and they do. I mean, they talk about a lot of this random stuff. Sometimes it's early, you just want to- They said that? You never told me that. Yeah, they talk a lot, and they do, but it's okay. It's They're nice guys. Right They're nice people. <laughs> Um, but it was really well worth it. It was comfortable. You don't have to jam in with other people, especially in the mornings of going to Hollywood. You're jamming in with a lot of people. You'd be and surprised how many people wake oh, up we that were, want to get to we, these rides. We left at, like I said, 6 30 in the morning, and we still were, I don't want to say way back. We did a good job because we, we, uh, we got Mickey's Runaway Railway. The second day it was open. Rise of Resistance, Slinky Dog, and Flying Sauce was done by 11 o'clock. Yeah, we, we <laughs> so really. We did well. Um, so we did good with the timing. So I would give a definitely a little shout out to the mini lift. Uh, How much was it? I told you, 27. Oh, you did, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, it was 27 bucks, 100% worth it. Almost makes you want to stay, cut costs someplace else if you can't afford certain things and just use the mini lift instead of the bus transportation, even though the, even though the bus transportation was much better. Uh, this time than in uh, October. I think it just terrible. depends when you go, how yeah. the crowds oh, are. But we wanted to talk about, so yes, the mini lift is a great option so if services, you want to go to Hollywood Studios and actually hit those rides, Rise of the Resistance, um, Smuggler's Run, mm -hmm. uh, Mickey's Runaway Railroad, uh, what's the other one I'm missing? The Slinky Dog. The Slinky Dog. Uh, yeah, Toy Story Land is popular too. The whole park is just on fire right now. So if you're going to go to try to get a boarding pass, which is at what time again? You're good with the time. Seven o'clock? Eight. Eight o'clock. You have to be in the park at 8 a.m. We were there by the 6 30 with the two kids, and the line was insane. Now, we use the bus transportation for everything, all the other parks. It's just Except for because we knew it was a high demand and everybody wanted yeah. to do the same thing we were doing. But in general, it was a it was a very nice service. And they, oh, another thing that's very important if you're traveling with kids, the regular lifts do not include car seats. They're cheaper, but they will not include a car seat. So again, Where you're many, paying... the many lifts, they come with two car seats in the back of every truck. Correct, yes. That was another thing that we learned this time around because we didn't know if they would have them or we had to tell them in advance because there was no way on the app to do so. So, good tip. Um, another thing we wanted to go over really quick was the fast passes. We have a lot of people that we know that are going for the first time and they don't know what they're looking for as far as fast passing and what's like a popular ride. Um, so I guess we'll start with Magic Kingdom. What are the rides that you would say you need to fast pass? Well, no, it's not, it's not about with park. It's, you gotta, you're, as long as you're booking with Disney, you get 60 days to book out your Fast Passes. If you're not staying with Disney, you only get 30 days. Right. But there are some hotels that are affiliated with Disney mm -hmm. uh, in Disney Springs. I think the Lake Buena Vista, Orlando Resort, or whatever it's called, um, that even though it's not a Disney Resort, they will allow you to book out the 60 days and they have their own bus transportation. Um, I don't know if the, what was it, the B Resort that we went to for the a car rental? Car rental? I think they, I don't know if they're affiliated, uh, but they I had a shuttle that But they had a shuttle parks. that goes uh, to Disney uh, almost every half an hour or something like that. But I wanted to talk about, because I, I have a lot of people that I know that are going for first time and they're like, well, what do I need to fast pass? Like, what's a hard thing to get on waiting wise? So in Magic Kingdom, I would have said Peter Pan, um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. The mine Train is the big one. Space Mountain. Space Mountain is not really that big. Um, um, you can kind of get that when you're there. I got it when I was there. Uh, the Mine Train is always the, the, the most Pooh. popular, and the Peter Pan is the most popular. Winnie the Pooh sometimes. Um, some, no, nah, you can get Winnie the Pooh when you're there. I would say I think we're missing another one though. When you book 60 days out, get Mine Train uh, as much as you can for for that. Those two rides. Pirates uh, is like it's it's you can wait. I mean, it depends. I mean, don't, I mean you, you get three fast passes, so however you want to use them, but get mine train for sure. Uh, the rides that move, like that are cons except Peter Pan. I shouldn't even say this because Peter Pan is on a belt. The ones that are like on a belt, the rides that are on the belt that constantly move usually are okay to wait on. But I shouldn't say that because Peter Pan's on a belt and the wait time is always insane for that. Uh, Hollywood, you want to get the Runaway Railway, obviously. Mickey's Runaway Railway, that was great. That's the big one. Because uh, when everybody's going to uh, Runaway Railway, you have the Fast Pass, you won't have to get it. You can just go to and wait, run to Slinky Dog instead and, and, and get that out. Because you can't have Runaway Railway and Slinky Dog. So, yeah. Slinky Dog, Runaway Railway, um, um, Rise of the Resistance, Smugglers, and then, and Run. Then Epcot. That's, Epcot. That's Hollywood. You're going fast. We well, just want to say which ones you want on the Fast Pass. Right. Those are like the high-demand the, yeah. well, the high demand ones. You can't Fast Pass all those. Well, I'm saying if they, they couldn't get one or the other, those are the ones to look for. Epcot, Frozen. Frozen's the main one that you really... Uh, 
that you can't get the day of. It's pretty cool. Ratatouille is opening, I think, this summer. So when that opens, obviously Ratatouille. I can't yeah, we wait saw for the that answer. ride. It's pretty neat. Um, what else? Soaring in Soaring Epcot. and Test Track. But test the Test Track we got when we were there. I mean, listen, you, again, you want to try to fast enough. If, but out of the big three, you want to try to get frozen. Right. And then Animal Kingdom, Pandora is where it's at right now. So, oh, and the, the Safari the, Ride. The Flight of Passage. Flight of um, Passage. We still haven't even ridden that yet. And it's, it's just, it's so, that one's so tough to get. There's really not much in uh, Animal Kingdom. So that's a tier one ride. It's, it's very, very difficult to get. So if you can get Flight of Passage, get that. And try to get Kilimanjaro Safari. I was extremely surprised. That I could not get one even way well, everybody advanced. I think that goes there is like looking for a zoo kind of environment or aviance. So the, the safari, you know, you get to really see all the animals. Uh, another thing that we like to do when we go there that I don't think a lot of people know about is Rafiki's Planet Watch. I think we do that all the time when we go. Um, you have to look out for that. And then you basically yeah. go on a train. It takes you to this place actually away from the park. Um, and they have a petting zoo, and you can meet Rafiki. They had a drawing class when we went. Yeah, the last new drawing time. classes there. I forgot what it's called. Um, animator or something. Yeah, and Imagineering animator or something. That I was cool. It's a, it's a new thing, and there was a lot of people. That's something uh, to take advantage of. I would say at least fifty rings. people were in the thing drawing. Right. From a, a guy was in the petting the class. Um. So we did the uh, what's the water ride in Pandora called? The Navi River. The Navi River, uh, flight of passage. Are we missing any? Um, the safari, oh, um, Expedition, Everest. Expedition Everest. That's another one that we had to fast pass. And I think that's really it for Animal Kingdom. Yeah. So anyway. Those were all four parks. Those were all four parks. Um, we just wanted to, like I said, I know a lot of people that go for the first time, they're like, I don't even know what's popular. So we just wanted to give you a brief layout of what you maybe should look for if you can't get one or the other. Um, and that's pretty much that. Yeah, so just make sure 60 days in advance, you know the exact day. Uh, I think they, the online opens at eight I'm not sure or, or maybe fast earlier, pass. fast, fast thing. Uh, and then make sure you're 180 days out for the, uh, what you do. The, the dining. Uh, the dining. And if you want to know the exact date, I mean, you can figure it out yourself, but if you really want to confirm, you can always call Disney and they'll always give you your dates as to when to watch out for. So that's always important though. You can never go to Disney without having your fast passes and your dining because you're going to be very disappointed. And you definitely want to game plan what days you're going to do what prior to the 180 day mark. Correct. Um, so that way, once you hit the 180 day, you know what, what restaurants you need to get those for those days, the 60 day for your fast passes. Um, and what was the other thing that you have to uh, really be? Your magic band? Magic bands, well that is they mail they to you. They come to you. Unless you buy them. I think that's it. Oh, ones. your magical express tags. They, do you have to call them for the tags? No, they send those. They send you your Magical Express tag. So this is, an, again, I could go on and on about this, but long story short, you are provided Disney transportation from your hotel, the Magical Express. You get tags in the mail, they're yellow, they'll have your resort name on them, attach them to your suitcase. Once you leave where you live, whatever state you live in, you will not see those um, suitcases until you go back into your hotel room. So basically Disney provides the transportation of your luggage from your airport, your home airport to your hotel room in Disney World. If you need something, like sometimes when we go and um, we travel, we get there early and Jill's like, I wanna do a park the first day. So we'll take what we need, like in our backpack that we're gonna bring to the park. That way we don't have to sit around and wait for our luggage to come to the room. Cause sometimes it doesn't come right away. Um, yeah, we so take, sh take shorts with you in the backpack. Cause if you're coming from a cold place where you're wearing jeans and you get there and it's 80 degrees, 90 degrees. Or a bathing suit if you wanna do a pool day. It can get hot pretty quick. So I always bring a pair of shorts with me. Uh, or you can just wear them. Bag. I mean, it depends. It's up to you. Um, but. And then speaking of booking out, if you are a DVC member, if you go to the DVC website, they have uh, a calendar actually uh, on the bottom of the webpage that uh, you put in the date the date you are going, and it tells you, all right, these is what this is the exact date you can book this. This uh, it's the seven month window, the eleven month window, as far as your home base versus your non home base. So it gives you a little nice, actually a really nice calendar of the exact dates for everything for you. 
I'll run out of DVC website if you're a DVC member. I bet you guys didn't know you had to do all this after this video, but it helps to know. It does because again, if you're not experienced, it's a lot to take in with one trip. So we hope this video helped. If you guys have any questions or you have anything that you maybe think is a good idea for doing another video, definitely in the comment section, write what you think. Or if you have any questions, um, we would love to help you guys plan your next trip. Yeah, if you have more questions about the DVC itself, how was the, the resale process? Um, uh, you know, more pros and cons about each one. Uh, yeah, right now we'll do another video about just the DVC. Uh, I think the that. next video we're going to do is Rider Switch, which we took advantage of this time. Again, that could be a whole other video in itself, but it basically allows you to go on rides that you can't um, with kids that are, they don't meet the height requirement. Well, one thing with about Rider Switch was, I was I, I, maybe I was confused. I didn't think it worked for fast passes. I thought you had to be in a regular line person and then the next person um, doesn't have to wait in that regular line. That next person can go with the fast pass line and that's how they make it easier. But you can actually use it with the fast pass, so it's very simple. When your when your fast pass time is uh, time is, is ready to go, right to the left or right of the fast pass line is a person standing there, and you go up to them. Hey, listen, I, I want to use the rider switch. She'll ask, okay, who's the rider that's going to go twice? Which is the kid, uh, which was our daughter. Addison. I guess we're not going to cover this in another video. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's it's actually it's actually quick. it is. Um, so they would scan her band. Now that allows her to go twice, and then they would ask, uh, who's going to be the person that waits with the baby? Uh, baby Jacob and so I'd be like all right I'm gonna wait with the baby so she would scan my van so then my, my wife would take Addison through the fast pass line on the ride uh, you know 10-15 minutes later she comes back out and I give her Jacob I take Addison and I go through the fast pass line it was actually really easy we used it for and every ride that Jacob well, couldn't get on. Well the thing was also that um it really benefits the kid. Like Addison looked out, she got to go on rides twice. Like I'm talking rides that people wait like hours on to get on. So it's actually a really nice perk that Disney offers for families that have kids. And that it's are on young. all the big rides. Every and big ride. And actually with Rise of the Resistance, which is the new ride that I suggest and I highly recommend that everyone goes to in Hollywood Studios. We did the rider swap, I forgot, let's just say 10 o'clock in the morning. And I wound up telling Joe, you know what? Cause I think Jacob was trying to fall asleep and I was trying to get him to bed. I said, you know what? Let me just, I was like, don't and worry. She didn't want to do it. I says, I'm not going to go on. I'm like, it's fine. I already had, you know, told him I was going to switch or whatever. But I was like, he's like, you'd be crazy not to take advantage of this. He's like, people wait so, you know, so long to try to experience this ride. He's like, and you actually now are able to. So of course I kicked myself in the behind, but he's like, why don't you just go up to him? This was like two hours later. He's like, why don't you just go up to them? Two hours later, I think. Or maybe three. And see if you can actually utilize your rider, your rider switch. Because with fast pass, you only get uh, an hour from... If your fast pass is at 10, you only got till 11, 11 05. They'll give you an extra They give you a cutoff. Long story short, there was no cutoff. I it's was able to get on. You're able to utilize it for the day, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was awesome. And I loved the ride. Rise of the Resistance, highly recommend. I'm not even a Star Wars fan, but it was an experience. Um, it was more so, of an experience than a ride. So, yeah, so definitely check so it out. So to reiterate, so if you do go use a rider switch at, let's say, 9.30 in the morning, and you want to go do some other things, or you have other fast passes right after that, you can do. You can come back at f six o'clock at night, five o'clock at night, and go back on that ride through the fast pass rider switch program. So you yes. have all day to use it. Once, but once the day's over, obviously it's it's done. Okay, so we're gonna stop talking your ear off. Uh, we hope this video helped. We're just trying to uh, put out as much information as we can to help you guys. Do uh, you know during this time? I know a lot of people whose trips were postponed are now trying to scram and get everything back on track. So hopefully you guys feel like this video helped. I didn't get to show them my shirt um, in the last video, but I am wearing uh, a Hakuna Matata shirt. If you can see, I got this at Target, um, which means Target. no worries. Oh yeah, Joe got his Avengers shirt to it, uh, Target. Anyway, the reason why I'm showing you the shirt is it means no worries. So during this difficult time, I hope you guys Try not to worry um, and just embrace the moment with your family. And we thank you again for subscribing. Share us with your friends and family. And like I said, if you have any questions or anything you want us to cover, drop a comment below.